Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in this big old wide world. It's been a crazy, crazy, crazy time. So many announcements, so many games in development, so much stuff going on. I just figured now would probably be a good time to have a little little chat, a little chat with everybody. Um, I'm going to talk a little about the past, but about the present and the future as far as the channel goes, uh, my stream, my content and uh, commentary and all that stuff. So as a lot of you guys probably know, I've been doing StarCraft for a really long time. I've been casting and doing tournaments and events. Um, I, I started getting paid for them in uh, 2013. Um, it's been 11 years since that journey, since that journey started, right? And I guess we could say, I mean, I ended up doing a little show this year, um, but it more or less went all the way up through, I think about 2022 is really when um, that was kind of, that was kind of when it stopped for me. So we made it about, we made it about 10 years casting SC2 and it's been such a fun journey. You know, I've been able to go to so many different places. I think that um, I, I, something I've always tried to avoid talking about when when it comes to my content is, is personal stuff. You know, I've always been very focused on, hey, everything's about the game. Everything's about having fun. Um, and I think that at some points I did such a good job of that that I never really got across some of the things that I was, that I was getting away from, some of the things that I was running from. And that's not anybody's fault uh, ex except my own. You know, I had I had a really good career. I got to do so many awesome things. But the truth is, coming into all of this, I was I was getting out of a horrible place in my life or before I was doing this casting. Before I was, you know, before I was some big shot StarCraft streamer, I was uh, man, I was some I was from some tough some tough places. My dad, my dad's an immigrant. He moved to the United States when he was 11 years old uh, from the Ukraine. He doesn't he didn't speak English, right? Had to learn everything coming out here. He moved with my grandfather, Leonard, who sold everything that he owned to be able to try and get them out of the Soviet Union and come over here to try and make this opportunity for, 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 for their future, but also for the possibly their kids future. And that's that ends up being mine. And I don't uh, I don't speak lightly of it because you know, I, I feel that uh, the sacrifices we make for the things that we want in our lives say everything about us. And for me, StarCraft II, when I had that opportunity, when I was in that IPL competition and I, and I got so close, but I lost, when I got so close to seeing a life that I wanted, a place that I could be, people that I could be around, that I liked, that I respected, that I admired, you know, nothing, nothing lit a fire under me quite like that. And it got me out of one of the darkest places of my entire life um i was living on people's couches my 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 dad was living in a shared space i couldn't go stay with him i was everything was all over the place and then things turned around i got this crazy opportunity to go to california and do wcs and you know some dutch guy i had never met was sending me texts with pictures of like a pool and a palm tree and he's like hey you don't have to live in your ex-girlfriend's basement anymore. You can come, you can come, come out here and try and make something of your life. You can try to do something. And I want to start, I want to start this whole spiel by saying thank you to everybody because uh, I never would have ever been able to get to the point of clarity and calmness and peace um, without, without that support. You know, we, people get it from different places. Some people get it from their family. I never really had a family. You know, I've just, I've just got my dad and my two brothers. My mom passed when I was very young. Her family was never in the picture. So it's it's one of those things where I've gone through a kind of crazy life and a kind of difficult time, but I never would have been able to come out on the other side of a lot of that stuff without the support and uh, the love that I got from the StarCraft community. So I want to give you guys your big dub first. That's the very first thing I want to say. Um, I appreciate everything that I've been able to see, travel the world. Um, and those are only things I ever fantasized about doing. I had never been on a plane in my entire life until the StarCraft stuff. Uh, we're dirt poor. Never had opportunities to do stuff like that. I never had my own computer. When I first got the StarCraft 2 beta, I had to give my account to one of my rich friends just so he would let me play on his computer. Um, fun fact. So, you know, that was, that was the kind of stuff that I did to try and pursue this and looking back on it now as uh as that journey comes to an end right we look towards other possible things in the future that may or may not work out we will look towards other opportunities um we seek other opportunities but i just want to talk a little bit about the great time that we had in starcraft and what i want to be doing next and where i'm going to be going next and wh where all of this is going to head so 
Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot to unpack. So first things first. Um, again, I had a great career in StarCraft. I got to be, I got in the game. I got like a voice pack in my favorite game and a picture. I got like my portrait in there and stuff, you know, to me, those are some of the biggest accomplishments I could possibly ever do. I, I'm not, I'm not a person that really seeks, um, that kind of like reward or put, put being put on a pedestal, whatever that, what, that kind of recognition. Um, I like, I like to let my work speak for itself. And I know that there's always been a contrast between the work that I put out there in my commentary and the work that I put out there on my stream. And I, I always felt like I was trying to play to different audiences. Um, I felt like there were, were expectations. I felt like there were things that people kind of wanted to see out of a stream and things people wanted to see out of a cast. So for me, being able to separate those just kind of felt natural. But over the years, I think a lot of that stuff that I gotten away from, a lot of those problems, you know, as I started to achieve my goals that I had set out to achieve and I became this, this big streamer, I became this, this big shot caster. I was doing BlizzCons. I was, I was getting flown around the world in economy class to, to go to China and go to Korea and go to Sweden and all these places, these, these places I'd only ever fantasized about in my mind as, as a kid. Cause I'm from, I was from some redneck country where everybody, you know, there's a 99% white town. Look it up, Moscow, Pennsylvania. There's not a lot going on there. That's, that's where I went to school. That's, you know, you get a, you get a very closed view on what the world looks like when you're from a place like that. And the internet for me has always been a huge way to expand, you know, my knowledge. A lot of things are crazy. You meet a lot of weird people, you run into scams, you run into all sorts of stuff. But you know, I, I ended up meeting some of the coolest people that guided me on a journey to be able to, to be where I am today. You know, I have, I have a good home. I have a good life. I have a wife. I have a family, I have a family that I'm married into. I have like a family for the first time, really. It's like kind of crazy, you know? Um, and I have all these, I have all these people that ask me how I'm doing and they, they're looking out for me and they do nice little things for us. And I know that for a lot of people, that's, that's normal. That's the expectation of what life is supposed to be like. But, um, I haven't had that kind of love poured into me, uh, really at any stage, at any stage of my life prior. So. I've been able to make tremendous progress. I've been able to calm down a lot. I've been able to get a lot of uh, difficult things, you know, off my chest and out there. As I'm sure some of you guys, anybody who's had to deal with the American healthcare system knows, unless you are in the, unless you are being arrested for something, man, it is tough to get someone to sign off on you to go see a mental health specialist. Uh, it really is. And uh, God help us all if that never changes, but it's hard to find someone to talk to about stuff. It's hard to have people that'll be there for you. And I know that throughout the course of everything I did in StarCraft, there were increasingly, as time went on, those those negative feelings that I had bottled up, they found their way out, you know? That that stuff I was sitting on, that stuff I buried, it, it tore me up inside, man. It tore me up inside. I felt such an injustice that, uh, that I had, you know? I had to have my own back that much, right? That it was, that it had to be that difficult that I had worked those couple jobs in college and ran this StarCraft team and all of that, putting all that time and effort in still wasn't enough, you know? Cause then, cause then you managed to barely get enough for your books. And then the next thing you know, Hey, you're, you're like, <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta, you still gotta pay your rent and then you gotta, then you gotta eat and then you've got your tuition bill and life is tough. Life is just tough. People, people are not uh, quick to really be understanding of each other is something else that I learned throughout that process. So in my life, it was like, Hey, you got to take all that stuff. Nobody wants to hear about it. And you just bury that. And so, so really where am I going with this? I just want to say, I'm, I apologize if you've ever been caught in the path in the caught in the path of, uh, of me lashing out. I'm not a hateful person. I don't have any enemies. I don't, I don't spend my days thinking of or wishing bad things onto anybody or people. Um, I wish good things for people that I care about. I, I would like to, uh, I would like to be able to do more for my family. I'd like to be able to do more for the people that I care about. And that really, I, I, I guess is, is where we're going, right? So coming into the future, it's clear that there's not really a space. There's not really a space for me, right? In, in Starcraft anymore. And I, I recognize that I've, I've done a very good job of, uh, <laughs> leaving that space and uh making a big mess out of it and learning more difficult lessons in that whole process so it's it's not anything about uh oh this or pity me that or i want this um it took me a long time i wanted to wait to talk about it after i stopped casting 
because I felt like the longer I waited, then the less people would think it was just me reacting. Right. And it would be like, oh, I'm just going to I'm going to think about this. I'm going to think about what I want to say for a really, really long time. And then I ended up getting hired to cast again. And then all the feelings came back. Right. So this month has just been crazy for me. I've I've been waiting for about a year to find out when I'm going to be able to play Stormgate. You know, there's other games on the horizon. I I don't think that there's any long term future for me in investing my time and energy into doing StarCraft as much as I do love the game. It's clear if you've if you watched my stream in the last year, it's really clear that I just don't have any goals. Right. I think that's my biggest problem. Like I made Grandmaster, but now there's less people that play. So it's less big of a deal and people don't really respect it as much. And then it's like, well, you play the same people all the time because there's less people that play. And I, I don't I don't want to spend really much time talking about the why I don't enjoy playing. I love my memories and I love what it was, but what it is right now is not the same. And I think it's OK for me to say that it's hard to come up with new, exciting ways to try and make content around the game in its in its current state and in the way that it's being managed, which is to say Blizzard does not support the game. Blizzard does not update the game. Blizzard does not put, dedicate any resources towards guaranteeing the well-being of the game, the community of the game, or even the esports scene of the game. Um, StarCraft II, as it is right now, is entirely run and operated. Uh, everything that happens in the space goes through ESL. And uh, they're great. I've worked with them a bunch uh, over the past. I mean, I just did the thing with them for like two weeks, but for whatever reason, I'm not, I'm not on that, uh, I'm not in that in-group, right? I don't, I'm not, I'm not on that, uh, that old boys club anymore. So to, to tell myself that there's some effort I can expunge, I can put in all this hard work and things will turn around and I'll be a hero or something. is just kind of ridiculous. You know, it's a little bit silly. It's a little bit silly and I don't, I don't really deserve it to be honest. So I want to let you guys know, I'm going to be giving it my all in Stormgate because I see it as a, as a new opportunity for a game that is at the very minimum going to be supported, uh, for, for however long we don't know. You know, maybe maybe the game bombs out, maybe the game flames out, maybe it ends up doing really well. It doesn't really matter, because um, I guess that's that's kind of what I'm trying to say is um, I'm, I'm in that situation where I want to try and do those things again. I want to make those goals again. I want to I want to do do all of those things that were such a journey for me to get to the place where I can do them in Starcraft. And I want to do them without the context of all of that baggage. I don't want to have that stuff hanging over my head and I don't want to project that stuff onto the people that come to my stream or the people that I play against or any anything like that. And I think that I found, um, especially as, you know, Internet uh, discussion and discourse, the quality of discussion has gotten very aggressive. Right. People are people seem more strained and more frustrated than ever before. And it's uh, it's something that the more I saw it in other people, the more I noticed it in me. And I really, really don't like the feeling of seeing something and like having some sort of visceral response and being like, oh, I got to call this. I got to say something here. And I realize now everything just seems kind of rigged to try to do that to you. And I, and I guess it works. But if that's if that's what I have to do to be successful, I, I would rather fail. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to try and continue to do my kind of wholesome thing I've been doing, playing the game for fun. I'm going to be making a lot of educational content again uh, when Stormgate comes out. I want to do a whole co-op series like we used to for SC2. And I think that uh, the person that I am now can do that, can do that without fumbling it. Um, while it's true that there are things that I wish I had handled better in the past, I don't I don't have the ability to go and change those things. So the last thing I'm going to say is if you guys are excited about other games that are coming out, if you're interested in joining me on a journey to uh, to someplace else and uh, you want to keep the door open in case Blizzard ever returns, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. There's nothing I'd love more than to see them come back and do more events or updates for SC2 and kind of see the game go back into the, the hands of the, the creatives, you know, the people that own it. But uh, as long as as long as the only thing that's going to happen with StarCraft are decisions made for monetary reasons by other companies, it's extremely reckless and dangerous to uh, put my family in the position of depending on whether or not, you know, ESL decides they ever want to hire me again, because that's also not on ESL either. Right. There's reasons. There's reasons why they don't hire me. They may not tell me those reasons, but I assume their reasons are good. So I can't uh, I can't gamble it all on that. So I'm going to gamble it on the next big thing. 
we're gonna see what happens and if it doesn't work out i'm probably i'm probably out doing something else next year so i really love streaming i've made it like 12 13 years running on twitch and making videos and doing all of that it's been the absolute time of my life i really i really have no no regrets i think a lot of what i dealt with is a normal experience that people kind of just face when they're exposed to lots of different outside stimuli and they uh they come from any different kind of background you know it was a stressful position for anybody to be in i was 20 years old being put up on a big stage uh talking for thousands of dollars for million dollar productions and uh man it just uh it was a lot it was a lot so if you've uh, slogged through all of this thank you so much i really appreciate again everybody who takes the time i just wanted to offer this as a little bit of closure for some people because this is the kind of heavy stuff that uh i always get it's always a little awkward to talk about on stream you know people always people kind of like come in and they ask you these tough questions and you're like well if i answer now then it's going to go off into the abyss of my Twitch VODs, right? So I wanted to put something a little more definitive here and just say thank you to anybody in StarCraft. Um, if I've ever hurt you, if I've ever called you out, if I've ever called you a little stream cheater or sniper, I hope you know I did it for the same reason everybody else. At least I assume, I hope everybody else does. I was just mad because I lost a game, man. You beat me in front of like a thousand people five years ago, you know? That was a huge deal. That absolutely would set me off. Was I right for it? Absolutely not. Did I intend anything ill by it? Absolutely not. And I hope you guys get that. Um, while I have used some pretty extreme language that I definitely uh, <laughs> would dial back given the opportunity in the past, I hope you know I only ever had the best of intentions. And I have never, ever, uh, maybe an easier way to say this is, all of the insane stuff I have ever said or done in StarCraft has been live on the internet for people to see. There is not a single secret I have to hide. Um, so I'll, I'll say I'll say that much. Um, there hasn't been a crazy balance rant. There hasn't been any accusations. There's been nothing of that sort in many, many years. So I again, I say that only to try and reinforce this single point. I, I really, really never intended to hurt anybody. And if I hurt you or made the game less enjoyable for you, I'm sorry. And uh, if you're anybody that's tuned into WCS or DreamHack or ESL in the last 10 years, Red Bull, uh, you know, Team Story, all that stuff, if I've been able to make it even just a little bit more entertaining, if I've been able to make you laugh at least once, I want you to know that's that's what it was all about for me. And I appreciate so much everybody that uh, has the courage to go on and share their joy of something with other people, even though they don't know who they are, because uh, there's a lot of mean people out there. So... That's all I have to say. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's another video that gets made of this. Maybe we go and flame out immediately. I don't know. So we'll see what the future holds. I'm very confident in the teams that are working on these games, but you know, kind of like them, I can't just, I can't just sit on my hands hoping that StarCraft changes everything out of nowhere, especially when, again, uh, I've made myself out as such a pariah in that space, and deservedly so. There's, there's no. There's no pretending, there's no pretending or defense of any of that stuff that you're going to see here. I just recognize the reality of my situation and I feel like some people deserve, uh, again, that, that closure on that. So that's going to be it from me. Otherwise, I'm going to be streaming. I've got a couple of long-term stream goals I've always wanted to hit that I'm going to try and do a few challenges for some non-StarCraft games in the next month. Um... And then, of course, obviously, I'll be playing StarCraft up until the release of Stormgate. But when Stormgate drops, I'm going to be going in full time on that. Again, there'll be co-op videos, build tutorials, unit guides, micro tricks, all of that stuff. Uh, setup guide for settings and things like that. And we're going to go hard on that and just see what happens. It's the first game that's really drawn, gotten my attention to the degree of a game like StarCraft in many years for making content long term around. So... If that works out, great. You know, if it does super well and it's like, oh, Nathan's the biggest Stormgate streamer, great. I'll run a StarCraft tournament. I'll run my own thing. Whatever, you know. The first thing I got to do is try to find opportunities where I can make things happen for me and for my family. Right now, most of those <laughs> most of those are not on the internet. <laughs> so, uh, I can only I can only justify to myself, you know, the effort that I'm trying to put in here uh, for such a long time, right? So, for me, this is going to be a, a big push. 
going through the end of the year with Stormgate. And uh, if I'm not streaming in 2025, you know, maybe that's just the way that it needs to be. But I felt like at least uh, one person watching this would probably be happy to at least get some closure or feel satisfied and not having to hear what uh, I'm doing from somebody else, maybe. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I love you. If you're a Terran player, Protoss player, or a Zerg player, thank you so much for being a part of what makes StarCraft great. Because as much as uh, as much as I've ever said, oh, Ter you know, this or that, I hope you know the game is really boring and uninteresting without the other two factions. And that's uh, that's something that everybody would do well to keep in mind. But as long as the servers are still up. I'll be seeing you here and there on the ladder, all right? So be careful when you see those BCs warming up. God bless you guys. Till next time.